Hello my friends and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I haven't been here to chat with you since my 50 mile race prep and or my return to ultra series. If you're new here, be sure to go back and check that out because you won't wanna miss that in the context of me officially announcing that I am training for my first 100 mile ultra marathon this year. Now, if you've been around for a while, it's no surprise to anyone that I'm officially taking the 100 miler head on and attempting it this year. I've been training and running ultra marathons since the fall or since the spring of 2018 during the first semester of my PhD. And now that I'm through the PhD, I'm through the postdoc, I finally have the time and space to take on the 100 mile goal. Now, this is something I've always wanted to do, but training for ultras is hard and 100 miles is a big distance and coming back from my injury and getting back to ultras last year, I knew that that was a small piece in the bigger puzzle of hopefully getting to this point in here. So I kind of took a multi-year goal approach to get to this point and I feel really good coming off that 50 miler last year to get back into the shape and or also be in the headspace to take on attempting a 100 mile race this year. Now I will be racing the No Business 100, which is in the end of October of this year. So I have got a lot of time to train and prep and prepare for this race. But that doesn't mean that's the only thing on my agenda for this year. And I'm gonna take you through training and series and all the things that I'm gonna be doing this spring and summer in order to both prepare for this race, but also simply to enjoy being in a higher level of fitness this year. And what I like calling having the fitness to say yes and taking on some more fun objectives and just getting out there and enjoying long days outdoors. So right now, my first objective and goal that I am training for is a Grand Canyon Cowboy Loop in March. You can go back in my videos and see the last time I did this was in 2020. And I'm going to be doing it again this spring with my friends, Laura and head assistant coach of the List Method, Allison. I love the Grand Canyon, so I'm so excited for this. So one of the things that I'm really trying to sprinkle in, not only for this goal, but some of the other goals me and my husband, Regis, have planned for the spring is a lot of vertical gain and loss training. And unfortunately, I don't have a lot of vert around me, so I'm having to get creative, which I know many of you have to do. Not only that, but I'm still trying to complement and pair my lifting and running across the week. And so that's exactly what I'm gonna do this week is take you through a full week of hybrid training to kind of show you what I've been doing this January, the first month of the year in preparation training for this. Right now I'm lifting three days a week and I'm running four or five days a week and or maybe making that fifth day an extra type of cardio of choice. I got in 28 miles last week. I crushed my lifts last week. So we're feeling really good and like we're getting back into it. And so I'm super excited to share with you this whole week of training. Today is day one and I'm going to go do a moderate distance weekday run about six or seven miles with some hill repeats mixed in. Now these hill repeats won't specifically be for speed or intervals or hard intensity. My speed workout day is tomorrow, but rather for me to just get more vertical gain and loss on my legs during my weekday miles. I have a hill here that is like one of the only hills that I have. And so I essentially have been running to it and then doing repeats going up and down it, kind of like strider repeats or steady zone two repeats, just to simply practice running uphill, but also just getting vertical gain on my legs, which is kind of easy to do if you have access to a treadmill, but it's that loss and that downhill decline that many of us don't have if we live somewhere flatter and you can't really get on a lot of treadmills. So that's specifically why I am doing that as part of the training here to expose my quads and my legs muscles to that eccentric downhill training specifically so that I'm prepared for not only the Grand Canyon, but just anything outdoors up and down vertical gain and loss that I will hopefully be getting into this spring. All right, enough chit chat. Let's get this run started. It is cold here. It's been cold here, but it's sunny and that makes all the difference. I think it's like 30 degrees outside. I'm being dramatic. I ran when it was five degrees the other day, but Nonetheless, it doesn't matter because it's just, I don't love cold weather running, but we're gonna get it done anyway. So I'm layered up. Um, I'm gonna get my watch on and my heart rate monitor, my headphones in and get this warm up ready to go. Okay, one very fun update actually, my dudes do deaths and doodles is that I now have a home gym. So one of the things I love doing now that I have a home gym is warming up inside before I go outside in the cold on my runs because I'm a wussy who still gets after it. The key is you gotta sit in front of the, it would make sense if I put myself in center camera. The key is you gotta sit in front of the heater while you get ready, get your shoes on, get after it. Anything special. 
special, no special vert training type protocol. It's literally just me running to a hill and it being the biggest, longest, steepest, slowest climb and descent I can find that's on like not a main street and doing it a bunch of times to get in vertical gain and loss. I wish it was sexier and fancier than that. The goal is easy, zone two, recoverable, but it's literally just running up and down the hill to get to mileage just to get vert in. And sometimes that's just the unsexy answer besides treadmill stair stepping or if you have access to like bleachers or stairs. So we're gonna do it, let's go. All right, we are back home and I'll tell you what, that was a terrible run. Um, the snow is just like unrunnable. So I ended up walking for probably like a mile total. And then the street is like partially clean and then partially icy in sections. So I took it super slow. And between making this video and then it being slower than I planned, I ended up having to stop at the gas station on the way home. And I bought a bag of nerd clusters and just like ate them pathetically in the doorway because I felt like dying. Um, so we were gonna get some food and I think we've already made the decision to put our upper body day tomorrow and then do our back-to-back -back double day on Wednesday and give these legs a rest. I don't know, that was a doozy of a day, my friends. Woo, some days just be like that though. All right, time to crush some food. I'll catch you tomorrow. All right, my friends, welcome to day two. Today is my double day, so I'm going to be doing my lower body squat focus session first and then do my speed work treadmill um, based interval workout after at the gym. And so ideally I would split these up morning and afternoon, but since my husband was lifting this morning and then I have a meeting this afternoon, sometimes it's easier for me to just do them back to back. So I have been doing them that way, but a two hour chunk of time can feel like a lot to fit into the middle of your work day. But knowing I have just an upper body lift tomorrow and then a rest day allows me to focus more of my focus work during the time and just kind of get this bigger chunk of my workout day done. Historically, I've always loved Tuesday for double days. I don't know why it's always worked out for me that way. And so we're gonna get started here today and I'm super excited. It's the top week of my block and I'm excited to see what we're gonna hit on squats. All right, first I'm gonna pull up my lift here on the List Method app um, as always. And I train with Coach Noah, but right now we've been toying with different things that we're integrating into year two of build or perform. We always kind of use me as a guinea pig for trying different things out and how they kind of work with programming and things that I like or don't like before implementing them for clients. So I'm always kind of doing a hybrid mix of that. But right now my training is definitely more set up like perform our kind of lifting running hybrid training protocol that you would do most of the time, except for when you're race peaking and prepping, which is our race program. Um, but I am trialing little bits of what we put into build as well. And then I sometimes integrate those into perform as well. So there's some congruency across the programs, but I've been really loving this block and I'm excited for this peak week and then a much needed down week next week. So let's get started. in my training every single week and in a lot of the perform stuff as well is a lot of smaller hops and jumping. It's a great way to get in little extra bits of plyometrics across your week while also kind of helping building some of that foot and Achilles and lower body resilience that can be very helpful with running since plyometrics are something that really helps with running, especially when we think about like hybrid or concurrent athletes aren't running quite as much volume often. You're usually trading off some of that, but that's a great way to get kind of that springiness um, and or tolerance on your lower body as well across the week that can translate into better running, more efficient running, and or potentially reduce injury risk as well. So I first have uh, speed rep back squats into heavy back squats. So we gotta do the jump squats as kind of a warm up power development. These are banded and kind of intentionally being focused on doing it fast and powerful. And then I go into my heavier sets. So we do use a lot of speed work, not necessarily having to use bands because you know not everyone has that set up, but different variations of speed work or not as heavy, but focusing on power and faster bar turnover with a lot of our strength movements within build and sometimes perform within the list method. Um, so you can kind of train different characteristics of that, which is why we're implementing this in my training this week. Okay, so last week I hit a top set of 220 for six reps and I would love to, you know, match that or beat it with a few pounds and trying to not get greedy this year. That's the theme coming back from an injury year. Full range of motion squats were an issue for me if you've been here for a while. So I'm really excited to be loading these again. So I just did a 175 pound warm up. I'm jumping to 195 <clears throat> and then I'll kind of keep making some jumps from there up to that 215-ish, see how that feels and moves and then see where I want to load for my top set.
Okay, 225 for six. That felt so easy. And I have so much fatigue on my legs from doing hilly run yesterday, vert training on Sunday, long run on Saturday. And so, <laughs> you know, I'm just so glad I got in and got it done today. That was the thing I was nervous about. And whoo! Don't call it a comeback, kids. Okay, finishing it off, we've got barbell standing split squats, which I'm loading at like 131 today. Pretty happy with that. I started the block at like 105 and they felt hard, but my glutes feeling stronger because of it. Some RDLs. Um, I skip the calf raises because I add them before my runs and then we'll go do the speed workout. So let's wrap it up. All right, I'm done with my lift, so I'm gonna get ready to head to my gym. I'm trying to get there as fast as I can because I need to use the treadmill since they have not plowed or shoveled all of the sidewalks here and I am not trying to roll my ankle. So we've been doing a lot of my speed work indoors recently simply because of winter um, and it's easier to kind of manage pace and everything, it's predictable. So I am going to get my shoes on. I'm gonna actually remember my heart rate monitor strap this week. Um, I'm also, I got these to put in my car but I have some other snacks in my car. I will eat some carby, sugary um, snacks in between this workout and the next workout. If you ever do double days, I highly recommend either eating during your lift or eating across the whole lift and run back to back uh, since they are longer than an hour. So like 30 grams of carbs an hour should be good. And then I have a liquid IV um, in here for salt and a little bit more sugar since it's so hot in my gym. I sweat so much, I lose so much water when I'm doing that and it's a harder workout. And so we're ready to get after it. Let's wrap this bad boy up, part two. Well, the work's only halfway done. All right, so I'm here at the gym getting ready to set up my speed workout. I can't really record in here like I can, but my gym's great because you have this ability to build a workout. And so I can do my custom intervals and I can program what I want to do for the day here. So that's super cool, super exciting. I've been doing, I start with four rounds, build up to five and six rounds of three minutes on, three minutes off. Um, and I think this week I'm gonna try to start extending them. I've been doing a lot of threshold level efforts just because I know going too fast will definitely aggravate my hip and Achilles. So we've been trying to like weed in the water. So I've been using some of the protocols that we've used in some of our base load off season plans that are kind of like tempo-y intervals um, with walking or jogging in between depending on the week. And so that's what I'm gonna do here today. Okay, first thing we're done. We did that at an 820 for four minutes and my heart rate on average is like 155. So. I'm definitely picking up the pace on that next interval here. I just wanted to see what I felt for four minutes on that one. So I started a little bit conservative and I have my heart rate this week. So we're gonna adjust for the next one because I'm extending these and we've been doing these for five, now six weeks. So definitely getting speed while being conservative, not being greedy, but felt pretty good. All right, speed work done for the day. I did uh, four minute long intervals this week instead of three, I bumped that up because those felt pretty easy last week and I've been keeping my paces kind of similar as I've just been doing these tempo threshold level intervals because it seems to be the, the relative pace intensity that my body tolerates, especially coming back from all those injuries. I wanna actually work on like turnover and getting faster, not blowing up. So um, I did five intervals total and I did them at 820, 753, 753, 747, and 747 minute per mile pace. The first one was way too slow and my average heart rate was like in the mid 150s, but it definitely drifted up into the low um, 160s, which makes sense for the level of effort that I was doing. And it felt actually really, really good. I'm really happy with this. I've been doing very similar speed workout week to week, uh, keeping it super consistent because the rule of training is if it's working, you don't need to change it. Keep doing what you're doing, right? And it is working. I can feel that showing it up. Um, slowly getting a little bit faster, especially after that last year of not really being able to run faster than like a 10 minute mile without my hip cut and Achilles kind of freaking out. So it feels good and we're counting our blessings and we're not pushing it. And I'm so, so ready for an upper body and a rest day. These legs need some slumber.
All right, I'll catch you tomorrow. All right, my friends, it is now Thursday. I ended up taking my rest day yesterday, much needed. I was super tired, super hangry, just knew that my body needed the extra day and I feel great today. And we kind of made the game time decision to also rearrange the rest of my week. There is a warm front coming through and it's going to rain on Sunday. So what I'm gonna do is like my, my second lower full body day today, which probably a small run I biked last week, but I might run today since it's so nice out. And then move my Sunday training to tomorrow and then my long run on Saturday and then my upper body to Sunday. And this is just a test to that all the rules are made up and it's completely fake when it comes to hybrid training and or you know training in general you don't need to take it that serious but also there's so many ways that we can rearrange our weeks of training if you understand the key underlying principles of hybrid training which I unpack for you um, in full depth in my ebook hybrid so make sure you get that if you really want to understand this logic and apply it to your own training and knowing that you can kind of move things around it's not that serious and that always always I will opt for running in the sun or warm if given the option so let's get it. Part one started. my water on the floor when I first came out here and I thought I cleaned it all up until I did that one ladder lunge and you nearly saw my light flash before my eyes so I don't know we were definitely sore from uh Tuesday Whew. that one got me We are working up to a heavy triple, like by heavy, I mean like RPE8, not max out today. I think we did 145 last week and it didn't feel too bad, but my legs are definitely a little toasty. Um, kind of at that peak of a block, a little bit overreaching, definitely accumulating some fatigue. And I know it, but we're gonna finish the week strong, so let's do this. Okay, so interesting thing, my whole garage is like a little bit damp from the humidity. I thought it was from my spilled water. So I'm gonna take this, I have this linked to my Amazon page, it's some alcohol-free um, liquid chalk. It's leaking, everything's leaking. I'm gonna put a little bit on my hands, but a little bit on my shoes, and maybe like my chest and bar, because everything's just like kind of humid. I, mean, I don't know what to do with that. Any, if you have tips, leave them in the comments. I'm just gonna run after this. I'm trying to keep my snackage up. Okay, we hit a set of 252 for six. That was a set of 225. We're increasing sets this week, even though they're back off. So I didn't want to get greedy and we're still building back my deadlift, but they're moving fine. Deadlifts just always feel like they're RP to me. Feels harder than my bar speed. And I think that's just deadlifts and you just gotta live with it. So next set. All right, we're ready for that running turn and burn. Got the run shoes on, got my heart rate monitor, watch, and we're gonna try to beat that sunset, but it's nice and warm out, so no complaints here. All right, we are out here on our easy little jog. Nothing fancy, probably like 30 minutes. Nothing crazy, just easy, slow, extra little mileage. 
All right, my friends, it is a sunny, warm, beautiful Friday, and I rearranged my week, as I said, so I can run today and tomorrow, because you just, I mean, you cannot, you can't pass this up, you can't. There's just, you, it's a rule, I don't make the rules, I just follow. So I'm at the trail, nothing really crazy, maybe like an hour or so of a run, and we're gonna do it, because TGIF, baby, let's go. You know, my current training is I am adding in speed work, and I'm keeping my easy days very easy. But I can feel blips of my fitness really showing up after even just six weeks of that. And so here's your testament to just, you know, trust the process and keep going, guys. That year of base building and volume in the zone two, you know, sucked from an injury recovery standpoint, but it let me set a massive base of fitness. Stick with it, trust the process, long-term mindset, whatever the gimmicky phrase feels best to you. So a more relatable YouTube video would have been me running through that like half a mile straight of mud puddles and every detour around them was the thorn, thorn bushes. So it was like half me falling through mud and the other half me falling in thorn bushes. And if that isn't, that isn't trail running my friends, I don't know, I don't really know what is. Today we are moving our long run to road today. Um, it's nice and sunny and beautiful again today. I'm not quite sure how many miles I'm going to hit. I'm kind of ahead of miles for the week and I was going to kind of still bump that mileage up, but I've been having some lower leg calf sort of tightness, I think just from running on the snow and ice last weekend and earlier this week. So we're going to play it conservatively, but it's a beautiful day and I'm just happy to be out there. So let's do it. All right, my friends, it is the last day of my full week of training. Yesterday, I did a nine mile long run. Did it on road because my calves are feeling extra tight and cut that distance short, but actually it felt really great. And I'm really glad that I did it. I am now doing my upper body lift, which I rearrange so I can run in the warm this week. And it's a rainy day. It's late Sunday afternoon, early evening. I'm very tired. I don't want to be doing this, but I had to go do Sling Three just today, but we are Getting it done, I have really no other reason but to get it done, so we're going to try our best to kind of get in, get out, and get it done. So let's do it. Okay, I am super excited about that. I just did 15 reps at 50 pounds for chest press. And basically we've just been doing like a single to failure every single week working up in weights from like, I think we started at 35, 40, 45, 50. And I did 16 pounds with 45 last week. So that actually makes me like really happy. We were doing 50 pounds for four presses in December and floor press has like a less range of motion. Um, and those felt easier than that, which I'm really excited about because historically chest pressing is one of my weaker things that I am not good at, but I forget that we've been spending a lot of time the last few years, which you can see in some other videos, benching and push upping and chest pressing and getting better at a weakness. And would you look at that? It improves with time and training. Okay, so this is transparently my first attempt at handstand shoulder tap, so let's do it. The move for the year is shoulder caps over thigh gaps. All right, and for my final exercise of the week, ladies and germs, bicep curls, because you don't win ultras by having bicep curls, but you sure let everyone know who the heck you are in that race. I 
All right, my friends, so that's a wrap on this week of training. I hope you enjoyed tuning in on this. I also hope you took away the flexibility of kind of adjusting your training around your life so you can enjoy your training as much as we actually work hard to do it and recognizing that there's so many different ways that you can kind of adjust your quote unquote hybrid week of training. I have over 70 examples of my ebook hybrid. I highly encourage you to snag that or check that out. If you wanna learn more about the science that goes into what I think about when I set up these weeks of training, I actually really enjoy this week of training. I had a very good week. I hit all three lifts. I ran 29 and a half miles. Um, and I also feel like some of my gears and my fitness are clicking again and lifting and running and you know, my body can stay in one piece. I have a lot of really high hopes and I'm very excited for this year. So if you want more full week of training videos, let me know what you'd love to see below in the comments and otherwise like subscribe and I will see you on my next video. Have a good one.